Let's have a wonderful time. You too. Connect and work for a living. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, man. Tell us when to go. So you just gotta go house. You wanna go first? You wanna go first? Uh, you go first since you're gonna be. You go and I'll go because I'm the easiest. Alright, sir. Let's skip. Let's skip. When I was a teenager, I just sort of visualized being a musician. You know, I would go to bed every night visualizing the stage. And all the details, you know, as I put my head in the pillow, I think, like, okay, I'm gonna have a Marshall lamp, and I'm gonna have a guitar with a whammy bar, and then, and I'll have, the, you know, this guy's gonna be the drummer, and you know, this is the tune we'll play, and this would be the audience, and I, and I would, that would comfort me, but pretty much every night of my teenage existence was that dream. I tried to dig up dinosaur bones in my mom's garden because I liked dinosaurs, but it was hard. And, and I never found a dinosaur bone. I got blisters on my fingers and the hole that I made with the shovel was relatively small. So paleontology just, it, 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 there was, it was, seemed like a lot of work. And uh, guitar was a lot of work as well. I, I, I uh, took lessons and I gave up almost immediately because I didn't like the way it was taught. It was sight reading which just seemed odd because music is sound and feeling. So I, at, six, at six years old, I gave up my guitar lessons. And uh, three years later at nine, I started playing by ear. Now that's three years of procrastinating and knowing that I was procrastinating. So I was serious about it. I was a serious six-year-old. And after three years had gone by, I really felt the, the weight of three years of inactivity. And I felt like, man, it's, I'm nine now. I gotta get moving because this is this has been three years of not making any progress. And so, uh, when I was nine, I started playing by ear, and it was a, a real, uh, real slog because I had no idea how to play. So uh, I didn't know how to tune, and, and and so I just played the low string only for for, for two years because that solved the tuning problem. If you if you only use one string, it can't be out of tune with anything else. So I only played one string. I had no idea you know, how to hold the pick or which fingers to use, but I played for one hour a day. An hour is a long time when you have no idea what you're doing. But it trained my ear and it trained parts of my technique really well. You know, I, I, got, I got a lot of authority playing that one string for only two years. And for a long time, I thought that that was, had been like some, a limitation on me. I've come to believe that that actually was a huge advantage that I got a lot of authority on something small rather than all this information to deal with at, at once. And uh, you know, that's the problem of anybody learning now is like they can go on the internet and get everything. And it's like, where do I begin? And it's like me, like I, I knew like two notes and I played those for two years. And by that time, man, you know those two notes. And my uncle played guitar. I didn't see him that often because he lived in another state, but when he would come and visit, he was really good. He, he, could, uh, he could shake a string around. And he sort of planted the, um, a very real benchmark of, of what the instrument should sound like, which was extremely helpful. Because when I started taking lessons, I had some good teachers, but my teachers weren't necessarily players with a lot of authority. And so I could get the information from the teachers, but then my uncle would come in and, and sort of show me, oh, that's how you strangle that thing, you know. You guys haven't heard Greek. It's like if you watch cartoons, you get it's, that, you know, it's the morning and it's going. <laughs> that's exactly the same notes as Barracuda by heart. I've been pretty fortunate with, with good audience reactions. I really should appreciate my audience more than I do in terms of how much they like music. 
you know, sometimes the, the venue gets mad at me because my audience doesn't drink enough because they're spending the whole time listening to the music so intently. But as a, as a performer, that's wonderful. That's the best kind of pressure. You know, if I, if I, if I do a good job, somebody notices. But my audience can be hard sometimes for this reason, is they like the old me. You know, they, they, they listen to the records that I made when I was 22, and they're like, we want to hear that stuff that we like that you did when you were 22, and why aren't you doing that? And we're really disappointed in this new stuff that we don't haven't listened to. And that's, you know, that, that's, that's fair. You know, that's, you know they, they bought the cornflakes, and, and, and where are the cornflakes? You know, what's all this, what's all this the other stuff coming out of the box? And so for me to win them over, I've got to confront them and go like, this new thing I got is freaking better than cornflakes. And, and I believe it, and I'm going to make you believe it. And, and I really have to believe it, because you know, that, that's the thing, is like, when you're, when you're known for cornflakes and you, and you get something new, that new thing has to be better, and that's not easy to do. You know, that's, that's where I, I've got to really go, well, this isn't just you know, my fun little hobby that I'm going to inflict on you and you got to endure. I've really got to, I've really got to do it. There was only one time when people actually turned around and started to leave, and I'll never forget it, because it was terrifying. And that was when I, I was doing a, uh, I did a cover of a, a police song called Synchronicity, and I kind of jazzed it out, did like a... With one up, and one up, you will not synchronicity. And I thought it was this cool groove, because I'd been listening to like, you know, Miles Davis, So What, and it's kind of similar to that. And man, the, the rock fan just was like, oh, enough of that, and, and they just started to leave. And I'm like, hold on, we're gonna do some ACDC right now. <laughs> immediately just dove back into the rock and people turned around and came back. There's two things that I, I, I've, like messages to myself that I will tell myself before the show if I'm nervous or, or even when I'm not, that just, that just help me to, to focus and, and, and perform well. First one is connect. You have to connect to something. And the best thing to connect to is, is the drummer because he's right there. And chances are that's enough. If you connect to the drummer, chances are you're, you're back on track and you're grooving and you can, you can forget about it, just have fun. If that doesn't work, there's other things to connect to. You connect to the audience, you connect to the bass player, connect to yourself, but just like keep connecting until you sort of feel that the ship is going in the right direction. It doesn't take long, but connecting really works. Uh, the other thing is that think of it as a job and your job is to work hard. Like, okay, I've got my shovel and I'm gonna go out in there and, and dig a hole in the ground and, I'm gonna, and it's gonna be sweaty work, physical labor, and that's my job. Well, you're not nervous about digging a hole in the ground. And really, you know, that's what it is. You're, you're trained at doing this job. You know, it's, it's not like you're doing it for the first time. And so go out there and, and, and dig the hole. And, and that, that helps too. It just gets, sort of, it, it just gets rid of all the distractions. Dig the hole. I bet if you talk to anybody who's really like a professional blues musician, that they would say the same thing, that I'll be standing there on the grocery line and I'm singing the blues. It, it, that's like the joyful part of it is you know, you're playing your... And you know... You know and, and you're just chewing on it. You're, you're chewing on the different ways to make that melody happen. And you can do that without the instrument. You know, it's basically like, it's, it's like the real air guitar, where, you know, da, ba, ba, da, da. you know, that's, you sort of know where it is because you, you've, you've played the instrument enough and then you, you're just singing it. Da, ba, da, ba, da. Oh. You know, <laughs> it's just such a, it's, it's a nice mental state to be in and it's, it's such a big part of playing. Because when you, when you play, you can tell whether, whether you're playing what you're singing in your head or whether you're just running through your patterns. 
and you know you might have good patterns, but you know it, you're you're not going to enjoy it as much. When you're really getting it right is when you're playing what, what's in your head, and that's that's like the best thing in the world. That's that's when you, you you hope the audience likes it, but you don't care because it's like, man, I just said what I needed to say. The challenge for, for me in particular, and I think from my generation of guitar players, a lot of people that, that, that were taught the way I was taught, was that you're taught to play almost without listening. You're taught to play visually. But, but you get so familiar with just running up and down these exercises that you're not necessarily exploring your musical intention. And when you do find out what your intention is, it may not match up those scales that you learned. And that's what I found, was that my, my musical intention is much more similar to what the singers were doing on the records that I listened to than what the guitar players were doing. And so a scale is more like a, a list, of, it's a list of notes. And it's like, you can build a story from these notes, but you know, if your story is just A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, it's not gonna, I mean, you can, you can have beautiful handwriting, you know, you can be correct, but it's, it's not a story. And that's, that's what a melody is, a melody is the story. It has musical meaning. But initially, to, to assemble the structure of the song, it's so much easier to build a melody with, with words. It just gives you something to build on. And it, um, it keeps me interested in it. And I mean, this thing I, was, I did today was uh, I, I knew you were coming. And I thought, he might ask me about songwriting. And I thought, I, I should write something. And I've been struggling. The last couple of days, I was going like, I, I had that feeling like, I'll never write again. I've, I've lost it, My, the, the mojo is gone, and I know that feeling, and, I, and, and now, fortunately, I know that it's not true. Here's what I did, is I tried to write without a lyric for a while, because it's easy. It's easy to try, because you hear, hear, I got my guitar, and you know, I, I got my licks, and I'm working on some new licks, and then I try to make it into a, into a song, and it's hardly, it's just so rarely satisfying. When, I, when you build it on, on fingering patterns and, and licks, and it's just like, it sounds like a lick, and it's just, I just don't like it. It's not, it's, not, it's not the sound I want. And as soon as I got a lyric that was interesting enough for me to, to chew on, it's, the fire's lit up, and I'm going like, oh, well, this is cool. And then, and then I would still run across challenges, but I, I, was, I was in the zone, I was tinkering, and, and the, the lyric was, um, you know, people will get upset about what I consider to be these arcane things. It's like, really? With all the things that could go wrong in the universe, this is what you're upset about? And, and the fact that they're getting upset gets me upset. And I thought, well, the cure for this is always pi. Like, this is, this is something everybody can agree on pi, I think. Like, you'd have to work pretty hard. I mean, maybe you could. I'm sure somebody's ornery enough where they could get into an argument. But I thought, in general, it's a pretty good bet. And so I wrote a song called Argument About Pi. You will never get an, in an argument about pi. You will never get in an argument about pi. Strum a major chord, drop your shield and sword. Yeah, you'd really have to try. To get into any kind of argument It's just a food Unless you're good and intolerant And that would be so sad If you couldn't have, if you couldn't have, if you couldn't have pie ah. And then a little big melody and harmonies with pie And I'm, I'm digging this one, you know, because it's, it's got the thing with, with like what I consider to be like real writing is when it when you get something that's like real writing, it has to be that. And when I'm playing licks, you know, it's like, well, yeah, that's one of those. But when it's that has to be that melody. It's like 
that's that's the thing. That's that, that's that's it's a song now. You know, it's 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 not just a lick. You know, with with those same notes. This has got a structure to it that you know, you can't change it now. It's it's like it's got a life. One specific musical thing is when you when you do it with words, uh, you're basing it on a human being singing, and a human being has lungs, which means you've got to pause and have stops, and that causes me to write in a, in a way that I would just never write with with fingers that don't have to breathe. Anyway, that's, I'm excited about this now, uh, in a way that I would never get excited about a lick. <laughs> to me, it, it helps to have a, like some sort of way to sketch things out. And the, the metaphor is, is, uh, is, is the table that you can spill ideas on. So step one is no editing. In other words, no judgment. Just to let everything out. Every idea you have, don't sit there and go like, oh, this is not good enough. Put it on the table and, uh, and, and get as, as much stuff as you can on there. I document with my the iPhone's got a little voice recorder. So I either hum it or play it, you know, get a minimum of, of 50 things and then sit down when you're, in, when you're in the mood and go like, okay, now the judge is in the building. So we're gonna to listen to these and, and see which one of them I like enough to develop into something. <laughs> it's it's so much fun coming up with a melody for unless you're gluten intolerant. I mean, would you rather spend your day doing anything else in the world? So, unless you're gluten intolerant. If I do 50 things, I might have three that, that I will go like, okay, well these, these are kind of cool. And, and then maybe of those three, one of them I'll be in the mood for that day. And, and, I'll, and I'll feel like it, I'll, and I'll have, my instincts will kick in and I'll go like, oh, that leads to this. And that might work. And I'll, and I'll tinker with that using the craft, using like all the things that I learned from, lear from learning, you know, a thousand other songs. And then I'll record it and listen to it. And then you, you start molding it. And that would be so sad. Those are my Todd Rundgren chords. You have to enjoy the process. If you're not enjoying the process, you're, you're not making good stuff. Now you can you can go through a lot of, you know, sort of, uh, you know, difficult slogging along, maybe in finding that joyful part. But when you when you finally get into it and you're going like, oh, this is I'm, you know, I just want to tinker with this forever, you know, that's that's when the good stuff happens. That's when you you've reached it, and you have to look for that. That, um, that state, that emotional state, where the tinkering is really fun. And, and, and that will, and knowing that to me is, is really helpful. Because if I'm tinkering something and I'm just going like, I'm just bored with this or I'm getting sleepy, or I, I, you know, I start, my mind's wandering, I think I want to do something else. Maybe I'll go up and get a, get a snack or maybe I'll get coffee. I haven't found the thing that, that I need to be tinkering with. I, I need to like toss that away. And, and tinker with something else. And, and that's, that's the thing, you gotta find the thing where, where tinkering is a joy. Building some tension there by repeating something one time too many. And then, and then this part I gotta work out. The... Now, I remember when, when I was a kid, I used to watch Sesame Street. There was a, there was a Muppet named Don Music. And Don Music was like, he, I, I, I love Don Music because it was very much what a musician goes through. He'd go like, row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. Merrily, 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 merrily. Life is but a... And then he, he was like in the process of writing the song and he couldn't think of the last word and Kermit would come in and try to help him. And, and that's kind of what it is. You know, you, you get this, was, you'll have some little moment of inspiration. Like I got, you know, you'll never get in an argument about pie. That was my inspiration. That came without work. That was that just like boom, you know, it appeared. And uh, but then I got to I got to craft the rest of the thing. I remember when I was 22, I thought that the songwriting process is you kind of wait, and then the song falls out of the sky, like Paul McCartney describes yesterday. He's like, oh, I just woke up one morning and had this tune in my head, and that happens. You know, when you're 22, sometimes a tune will just fall into your head. It did to me. I got a couple tunes that way, and. You know, you, you might get an album's worth of stuff once. And then you turn 23 and you get a little less of that. And then, you know, then you start to have to work for it. But if you find a way into creativity, 
you can do it when you're not 22. And, and you don't have to wait for it to drop from the heavens into your head. You can dig it out of the ground. And it's just as good. Sometimes it's better. And sometimes you control it more. With guitar, I can sit there and go like, I'm gonna play this melody all day because it's just so much fun to have it sound, you know, 0.007% better every time I play it. And I, I can just sit in, sit in that mode and, and, uh, and be the happiest camper where it, um, just about anything else, I just sort of wanna get it over with and, and, and uh, music is something I, I hardly ever wanna get over with. some of my most joyful moments as a musician is when I don't sound like myself, when I sound new. And it's like, man, I just sounded really different than I did when I was 22. And it's not that I want to lose that old part. It's just like, man, I, I just built an addition on the house. There's a brand new place to explore. And I really think that my best stuff is, is now or ahead of me. And I, I'm making discoveries that are, are just lighting me up more than anything. And, and it's a huge relief because it, it hasn't always felt that way. I mean, there have been times when I did feel like, well, that was it, and my best stuff behind me. And so to find ways to, to, to continue being excited and, and turned on, it's, it's the greatest thing. Mm -hmm.